Welcome to this video series, where we explore the world of WebDriver.io to help you succeed in your test automation career. Hello, my name is Marco Cruz, and I'm the founder of Automate Now, and I'm excited to team up with Lambda Test to bring you these awesome videos. My background is in computer engineering, and I have over a decade in software testing experience. You can learn more about my company by heading over to AutomateNow.io, and you can also find us on YouTube by searching Automate Now. In this video, we're going to learn about selectors and how to interact with web elements. There are many options to interact with web elements using WebDriver.io. For example, you can use the popular CSS or XPath selectors. But keep in mind that there are many other options. Before we can interact with web element, we must find it. And there are two options to find elements. One is if you want to find a single element, and the other is to find multiple elements. When we want to find a single element, we use a dollar sign. And to find multiple elements, we use two dollar signs. How about we take a look at some examples, shall we? All right, so first I want to show you guys how to create a test suite. A test suite is going to contain other tests inside of it. What you're seeing here is my WebDriver.io project. When I installed WebDriver.io, I was given the option to have a sample project already created. And that's why you see some files already here. For example, we have one spec file that says test end-to-end.js. If I open that app, we see a test, we see a test suite. Okay, but what I want to do is create my own file from scratch. Okay, my own test suite from scratch. So let me go ahead and close this right here. Then I'm going to right click this and say new file, right? So I'm right clicking the specs folder and then saying new file. I'm going to call this file lambda test demo. We always end the file with .js and then I'm going to hit enter. Now let's go ahead and begin building that test suite. So we're going to say describe here, describe. And notice that this comes from Mocha. That is the test framework that we're using in this case. So let's go ahead and click this. And then we use open parentheses. Then we're going to use a single quote and put a description of what this test suite is all about. So in my case, I'm just going to call it element interactions. Then I'm going to go outside the single quotes and put a comma, space. And here we need to put in a function. We're just going to use an anonymous callback function by using an open and close parentheses like that. And then we're going to go outside the parentheses, hit space and then equal sign, and then right angle brackets. We're almost there. The last thing we need here is an opening brace, and then a closing brace. Then I can hit enter, and I've created my test suite. Now that we have the test suite, let's go ahead and add the first test. To add a test, we click on here, and then we say it. Okay, this also comes from Mocha. And then I'm going to use an open parentheses. Then we need to give the test a description. So in my case, I'm going to say searches, for a product. Then we're going to go outside the single quotes, add a comma. Then we're going to add another anonymous callback function. But in this case, it's going to need to be an asynchronous callback function. So we're going to say async right here. I will be explaining this in more detail in later videos. Now I'm going to go over here and add an opening phrase and then hit enter. And that's how we create a test template. Next, I need to show you guys what this test is going to do. So let's head over to the Lambda Test Practice website. Here's the website that we're going to be using for many of our tests. You can find this by going to ecommerce-playground.lambdatest.io. This is a practice website where you can find many different elements that you can interact with. In our case, I just want to show you guys how to click on an element. That's the first scenario that we're going to approach. So let's say that we're going to click on this search button right here. Okay. First, we need to find that element, and then we're going to click on it. So let me begin by grabbing this URL right here, and then I'm going to copy this, and we're going to use this URL in our code. Before we click on an element or do any of that, we need to tell WebDriver where to go. So we're going to use a special keyword in WebDriver.io to tell it which website it needs to visit. And to visit a website, we use the keyword browser. So here I'm going to type in browser. And then I'm going to say dot URL. Then we use an open in parentheses and we add the single quotes and put in that URL. All right, so we've told our test where it needs to go. Next, we're going to tell it to click on that search button. In order to click on that button, we need to find it. And remember what I said about finding elements. In our case, we have this scenario. We're going to find a single element. So we're going to use a dollar sign to find that element. So I'm going to right click this element right here and hit inspect. And I can see here that this is a button of type submit. So I can use that information 
to create a CSS selector to locate the element. Let me go ahead and test my selector by hitting Control F, and then I'm going to say button, an opening bracket, and then I'm going to say type is equal to submit in quotes. And then close that, and then close the bracket. And here we can see that there are two results. We're looking at the first one right here because it says one out of two, and it's highlighting this right here. When I put my mouse over this, I can see that the button search up here is getting highlighted, as you can see. So that's going to be the first element. And when you're trying to search a single element, it's always going to return the first element that it finds on the page. So in this case, this is perfect. Let's go ahead and copy this and go back to the code. So let us go ahead and find that element. So I'm going to use a dollar sign right here. And then I'm going to use an open and close parentheses. And in single quotes, I'm going to paste that selector that we found. Then we're going to go outside the parentheses and say dot click because we want to click on this element. I'm going to press enter here. And you may come across this right here in VS Code Autocomplete where it adds this extra parentheses around this call right here. Okay. We don't really need this. So I'm going to let, me, let me go ahead and delete it right here. Also delete this right here. We do need this await right here. Okay. We're going to explain this await later. But for now, just remember that we need to have this anytime that we're trying to find an element. All right. Lastly, I'm going to go ahead and click here at the end. And then I'm going to add an open and close parenthesis because this is a method call. We're calling the click method. So we finished writing our test. Let's go ahead and run it now. So first, I'm going to go ahead and save everything. I'm going to do that by hitting Control K on the keyboard. And then I let go. And then I'm going to hit S. And that's going to save everything. You can also go to the file menu here and select Save All right here. This is the shortcut that I was talking about. Now, to run the test, we need to open up a terminal. And the way we do that in VS Code is by going to View Menu and then selecting Terminal. You also have this shortcut right here, Control tilde. So let me go ahead and click this. Now we have this terminal open. And then we're going to use this command. We're going to say npm space run wdio and then press Enter. Shortly, we're going to see the browser opening like so. And then we see the test running. And in fact, we see two different tests running. We have this one that we wrote and there's some other tests over here. Now, you may be curious why it's opening up two different tests. Now, let me scroll up over here. And notice that after I run this command right here, it says npm run web.io, what's really happening is this right here. It's substituting this wdio with this right here. This is the file that's getting run, wdio.conf.js. So that's this file over here, okay? So if we go to this file, let me open it up, and let me close this for a moment. You're going to find a section called specs in this file. And notice that this right here is telling it which specs files it needs to run. So in this case, it's saying use the current directory and then under test folder, this is our test folder over here, go to specs. These are our specs right here. And then basically the stars means that anything inside the specs folder is going to be run. In my case, I just want to run this file right here called lambda test.demo.js. So let me go ahead and comment this out right here. And then I'm going to use a new line right here in single quotes. I'm going to say dot forward slash test forward slash specs forward slash, and then the name of the spec file that I want to run, which is lambda test.demo.js. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and save everything. So I'll go to file, save all. Then I'm going to reopen the terminal by hitting control tilde. And then I can use the up arrow keys to bring up the last command that I ran right here. Okay. And then I'm going to press enter. This time we should only see our test being run. And this is the browser window that's opening. Notice that there's only one. And this is the test. It's going to click the search button right here. But everything's happening so quickly that we don't really get to see what happens after the button gets clicked. And that takes me to my next topic is how we can pause the test for a moment so we can actually see what's happening. There are multiple ways of doing that. One way is called debugging our test. We're going to learn how to debug our test in later videos. But for now, I'm going to show you how to add a simple pause to your test so you can see what happens after certain actions. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and add a new command here. We're going to say browser dot pause. Then we're going to open a parentheses. And in this method, we need to use the number of milliseconds that we want to pause for. Let's just say we want to pause for three seconds. So that's 3000 right here. And then we're going to add the keyword await here. Now let's go ahead and save everything. Let me reopen the terminal by hitting control tilde and then up arrow and then press enter. So we're going to rerun this command right here. And this time we should have enough time to see what happens after we click that button. 
And there you can see that it goes to the website, now clicks the button, and we see some items being shown to us. Now that we know how to click on elements, let's learn how to enter text into text fields. So for example, I can click on this right here and I can type iPhone and then press enter or hit this search button right here. And then we have some results over here. Let's go ahead and mimic that behavior. So first, let me right click this element right here and say inspect. And we have different things that we can look for right here. So we see that this is an input element. The type is text. We also have a name, a value. That's the value that we just enter here, iPhone. So perhaps I'm going to go with this right here with the name of it. I'm going to say search. So let me go ahead and test a selector. I'm going to hit control F and then I'm going to say input open and close brackets. And then I'm going to say name is equal to and then in quotes, I'm going to say search. And we notice that there are three elements. But the first one here, when I hover my mouse is selecting this item right here. So that's what we're going to use right here. So let me go ahead and copy this selector. So before we click on the element search, we're going to add some space here and enter a new command. We're going to say await. And then we're going to use dollar sign to find the element that we want to locate. Then in quotes, I'm going to add that selector. And then I'm going to go here and say dot set value. Okay, so this method is a special method that allows you to enter text into a field. And then we're going to say open and close parentheses. And in quotes, we're going to add the value that we want to enter in there. So I'm going to say iPhone. And that's how easy it is to enter text. So let's go ahead and run this test again. First, I need to save everything. By the way, this little dot, this white dot over here uh, represents that there's been a change to this file, but it hasn't been saved. So we need to save it first so that when we run the test, it recognizes that the updated changes. So let me hit Control K and then let go of those keys and hit S and notice that the white dot goes away. Now we need to run this again. So let me open up the terminal and there we're going to see it opening up, enters iPhone, click search, and then we see search results. The last thing that I want to show you in this video is how we can select from a drop down. So for example, here we have several drop down menus. We have this my account menu. We also have this mega menu. So notice that if we just hover the mouse over this menu here, we, we can see everything, right? I'm going to show you how you can hover over an element. For in this case, we need to hover over this mega menu. Once we hover, we need to click on one of these items. So the first thing we need to do is to hover over this guide right here. We can see that this is a span element and it contains a class called title. It's usually not a good idea to just use the class name to locate an element. The class name can change at any time, anytime that there are changes to the web application. So in this case, I'm going to just go with the actual text that I see here, mega menu. So let me go ahead and test a selector. I'm going to hit control F and then I'm going to use XPath in this case. So for XPath, we use forward slash forward slash. And then I'm going to say span the name of the element and then open and close brackets like that. And then inside of those brackets, I'm going to say text. This is a method. So I'm going to use open and close parentheses is equal to and then inside quotes, I'm going to use this name right here, mega menu. So let's go ahead and type in mega menu and then close that. And unfortunately, we don't see any results yet. So let me go ahead and reinspect this element. I'm going to click on this right here. And here we have the text. If you pay careful attention to this text, let me double click it here. Notice that there's some white space in front of the letter M right here. So what I need to do is to try to trim that white space. So there's a special method for that. So let me go ahead and instead of using text, I'm going to say normalize space right here. Normalize dash space. This is another method. And now it's finding that element. OK, so it's getting rid of that white space uh, either at the front or the end of the, the text that I'm looking for. So let me go ahead and grab this right here. So let's go ahead and create some space here. Let me add some comments here. To add a comment, we simply use forward slash forward slash. And I'm going to say element hover. Okay, so again, we're going to use a weight, then we're going to use a dollar sign to find a single element. And we're going to paste that selector right there. And then we're going to say dot, there's a special method to hover over an element. And that's called move to. So we're going to say move to this one right here, All right? Open and close parentheses. Let me go ahead and copy this method right here. So that we can see that hover. Okay. And I'm also going to comment out this code right here, because in this case, I want to show you how to do the hover and not do the search right here. All right next, we need to click on one of those elements. OK, so let's go back to the website and let's say that after we hover, we select headphones right here. So let me inspect this element here. Right click, inspect, and I'm going to use this right here, the title being headphones. I'm going to say 
a and then open and close brackets we said that was the title is equal to headphones all right so we have one element of those right there so let me go ahead and copy this selector right here so right after we move to the element i'm going to hit enter right here i'm going to say await and then we're going to find that other element this needs to be a double quotes right here otherwise we're going to get an error so let me go ahead and place those single quotes into double quotes and then we're going to say dot click and now we're all set we're going to go ahead and go to that menu hover over it and then select that item called headphones let's go ahead and save everything and rerun it there we have the browser coming up okay it hovers over that it clicks headphones and we can see here some headphones being shown thank you for making it all the way to the end of the video check out any of the links on the screen to get connected with the lambda test community get certified and get access to the code that you saw today see you in the next video